Hi everyone, this is Evelyn, and I have a lot of messages to bring through back from about the 21st. It's 4.30 on the clock now, which is interesting because yesterday was 4.30 and today is the 1st of May. Um, 4.30 is coming up. There was a, a shift yesterday for Mars. Mars went from Pisces into Aries, so that's definitely a palpable shift, being that Mars is now in the sign it wants to be in and Mars is an aggressive sign, so there's definitely that, that push forward of outward movement. So that's one shift that's happening at the moment. Um, there's a lot of energy around, really strange combination of energies today. This morning, Moses and then Medusa came up together, and then that came out again in my Instagram post, so you might wanna read that. So I'm going to try to get through as much of these messages as possible. I do have the, the Twin Flame read on the table, which is just the um, Syrian Starseed deck with the Rider Weight Mini for clarifiers. Um, I do have one or two of my messages of the day. We'll see how much of that we get through. I was just meditating on Twin Flames to see what message that my guides wanted to bring through as far as what Twin Flame is or one perspective anyway. And what was coming through was, um, first they're showing me a wheel, you know, like the front wheel of a wheelbarrow. It turns forward, so there's this energy of pushing down, but on the back end of the wheel is the pulling up of the wheel. And then they were showing me an, an infinity, like a, a dumbbell that you would hold on to, right, but in an infinity shape, and pushing this wheel around and around like this. Right, so you're going down, which is that push, and then the coming back up, which is the pull energy. But what they were showing me was it wasn't just the push and pull, it's each side is push and pull, and if they're not working together, right, what happens if one stops, right? Then everything goes off balance. So then they were showing me the car in the same respect, where you have this picture here. So this is what I was just showing you. Sorry about the rough sketch there. And then the same thing with the car. So you have the steering wheel and then the axle with the wheels over here. And you would think that you're just pushing with this hand and pulling with this hand, but you're not. You're doing that little dance uh, of push and pull on either side to keep it still and straight. There's this constant energy of having to work together in order to stay balanced. And so this was the energy they were bringing forward today regarding that twin flame push and pull. It is a quantum push and pull energy. So that's the first thing that was coming through. Um, besides the energy of Medusa and Moses coming through. So in the past life deck, a lot of stuff keeps coming up around the baby and around the relationships. And then Moses kept coming up as the baby in the basket because the picture is a baby in a, like a bird basket. And the energy of Egypt came up this morning to confirm the Moses energy, but then in co combination with the Greco-Roman times was also coming up. So we'll pull a card from the past life deck, see what comes up now. And then with Medusa, Medusa is med and then USA. So this med of Mr. Ed and medicine was coming up as Mr. Ed always comes up as Mr. Ed being God's nickname. And then also me, M-E, which is also means the gift of civilization back in the, in the, the god and goddess times, um, but also me being god as a nickname, and then med, right? Me and Mr. Ed is the energy of med, and then medicine, which Sine is the movie of god, basically. So it's really interesting the way it was coming up. And then Medusa, of course, med USA. And of course, Pegasus was birthed from Medusa with Poseidon um, when she was beautiful, right? And then Athena comes up as getting pissed off because she was with Poseidon, so she makes her into this ugly Gorgon like the rest of her family, but worse now, with eyes that turn things to stone and then hair that is now snakes, which is then referencing now as the rejuvenation and regeneration of medicine. And then her ability to, the stoning thing was coming up very significantly too, right? The ability to, to heal the energy of being stoned 
and the power that she holds just with the, the use of her eyes for healing. So, and again, the medicine stone, right, the, the, that you uh, mush up the pills in, that kind of energy was coming up too. A lot of medical healing energy coming up with Medusa here. So the dolphins also came up along with the, the healers that had been persecuted in the past. The dolphins being um, jailed by being in an ocean that's polluted, and then the, uh, the priests and priestesses who were jailed, literally, but also strung up with string, right, or cord, which can be a wound right there in itself, and just showing the different perspectives or ways of being imprisoned, depending on what your home is and what you need, what you think is beautiful, what you think is ugly, and then here you come up with Medusa again. And, um, and again, Moses, right, being a Hebrew or an Egyptian, right? a part of the people or part of the, you know, the elite heads. So going back to the beginning here, <laughs> uh, the 21st, let's see where we are here. So the, four, the number 14 kept coming up over and over again around that time, around the 21st. And battling, ban dueling banjos, like in Deliverance, was coming up. And then Alicia and Banjo was coming up, which means banjo, but also means other things. And so I looked up Alicia Keys. Um, she returns to her roots with her new musical called Hell's Kitchen. And she was looking for like a triple threat performer for that. And who was coming up with someone who plays the banjo, which was Rhiannon Giddens. Oh, and Beyonce's not um, her country hit, Texas Hold'em. But also, banyo, besides banjo, also means bathroom. So, um, and restroom, like a room to rest, literally. And um, a water closet, all those you know, kind of dual meaning energies were coming up regarding the banyo or banjo. Deliverance of instruments versus weapons of mass destruction. Uh, and also flags, uh, building, building a bench and the fourth leg like the carpenter and getting biblical was coming up here. A simple peg in the hole bread and water, back to basics, cords and training, pairs that work well together and harmonize, as we just brought up this explanation for Twin Flame. His words, her chords, and O-R-D without the W still means words. So his words with a W, her chords with a C. The, the twin words, the W words, and the C words. After play, war, work, and meal, Hungry for father and child, the biblical energy of food and fat related here as one with a suitcase on the railroad pyramid leaving to destination unknown and the other the white teepee pyramid sprouting Native American and working the soil. The desert versus the green track leaving behind survival to explore the unknown, packing a shaman's perspective the Native American, which is coming up as the um, Rican means kingdom and realm, to turn the authoritative dominion here was coming up, to turn, bend the wind or wind, move and shake, unforgettable ivy temple, one equal and congruent to A-M-E, I am and I me realm of Adam and Eve, the kingdom, amical A-M-E and am-me realm. I'm sure there wasn't something before that. Oh, that's interesting too because AMA came up again today in my meditation. I almost forgot to tell you that. So before I started getting to the wheel thing, they first showed me 
uh, I was getting Lama and Dalai Lama, and then the word Lama, which has two L's, so two L's as in two Elohim, were coming up for the twins. And then Lama is the double L's, and then AMA, which Ama Naman had come up at that time. And spe specifically saying that it's not just about our loving Father, right? Lord's Prayer or Lord our Father. It's not just about the Father. It's always about the Mother Father with wounds and shelter of us, the quake and the wave, the shift and the spiral of the M and the F, which is masculine and feminine, but it's also the M of co-creation, right? And the mountain, 1v1 is co-creation, and also the F, which is literally digamma. It's two gamma waves, which also is a pyramid if you turn it on its side. And when you crack the F in half, it becomes the M when it's broken. So it's literally like the splitting of the cells becoming going from the F to the M and then the coming back to oneself, the unity of the cells coming back together is then that M rebuilding and coming back into the F. And so the F is the, uh, the feminine as opposed to the masculine, but it's also the F is the father as opposed to the mother. So now you have a feminine and masculine aspect with each letter or each energy. So that AMA was coming up again today with the Lama, the two L's, and the AMA. And that same day, the AMA with mother and father was coming up with Philadelphia, which isn't just the city of brotherly love, but brotherly and sisterly or sibling love, really. Um, and also Dolphin comes up with Philadelphia as well. And two Phi, the elephant and the elf, the island of misfit toys. And again with America was coming up the AM temple, which AME is also meaning loving, line, veil, lineage, leap, request. And America between the mountain to mountain, not just sea to shining sea, but from mountain to mountain is the sea of the inner child, the home of the brave and the land of the free. I just keep on, with Amen Amen, I keep wanting to say, and in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So then we get to um, um, telepathic double vision was coming up. Like instead of TV as in television, telepathic double vision was coming up. And double take had come up also on the 29th. The TE and the TF were coming up together as the source temple with the twin flame, the tent of the father, and the, four, the home, the four of flames, which is the four of wands, or the home, the union. The infinite digamma, that F, and then also um, THF was coming up as, as tetrahydrofuran, which is a, a heterocyclic ether with five members of the ring, four carbons and one oxygen with an ether smell, but used as a polar solvent or something that solves polarity. So and the number 14 was coming up again with the one and the four and the number five coming up, which 14 is a five. The row of flames, the angelic dear one, the catalyst of the domino fall, where one and four is the one of I and the four, which is L to one. And then the energy of the I bent, where, how does the I get to L? Where does it bend? Where does the I bend? Well, it bends at the cornea, at the, the arcing the horn of Ea, the East Africa came up at that point too. And cornea is cornea, which is near earth asteroid as well, that came up at that point. So the eye bends light at, this, at the dome and the super dome was coming up here as well as Cornelius, which Ias had come up in another word as meaning Jesus. 
And so here we have the co-RN, or nursing, of L. Jesus. Towards the Lambda Leap, the Lambda Father, on the bridge home to Father. All right, so then we have getting to the 23rd. I looked up in um, Gematria certain numbers that were coming up that day. Um, some of the numbers that came up were 108, 680, 808, and 6880. So it was very interesting, 6880. The, the line that came up for that number is, was in another language. I didn't know what it meant. So I looked up every word to piece together what the meaning was that was coming through here. And I'm not going to say this correctly, but it was Grupa, Krania, Artsi, Sidzi, Na, I don't know if that is pronounced as an L or what, because it had a cross across the L, but it was uh, L-A-W-C-E. I, Jackies, Kraunos, Smazi. And then the second entry was Sistery, four, 14 times, and then the word Sistery again, which means four. So C-Z-T-E-R-Y, and then literally the name, the word four in English was listed 14 times, and then C-Z-T-E-R-Y again. So all together, there was 16 fours. And um, in 680, Ptolemy's Cleopatra had come up. 108 was TH, Bingo, and Hades. And Ironclad came up with 680 as well. And things that monitor or, or direct time, like clocks, things that monitor time. Um, with 808, Shiva came up as well as the lie of denying the bride and ends curse of being on earth. And that was under 808. Um, so I looked up all those words. Uh, I think it was in Polish because most of the words came up under Polish definitions. And it was coming up around nine crows, showing respect to the earth, to sit, hang out on the salty bench I, some kind of cow who knows to fry. A group of nine artsy crows and cows were coming up, as well as whales, but it was mostly about the cow, right, the sacred cow, and counting crows was also coming up. A group of nine, or a group of artsy cows or crows, and again, whales, um, Black and nervy to nest on earth as a sign of respect, to sit on the bench, to clear now on the bench, to stew on the bench. I unsure how long to fry. The cooking time is hazy. The group of cows that in a show of power in, pet, in petition to the sultan, the earth, to sit now in this moment, to be on the salt on a long bench. And then the Longwood Gardens whispering bench came up or nine Aries cows who sit on nine benches, unsure how long to know how, how long to fry. And then Chrono with time and Saturn came up. And then Sir Apis also coming up with this SA of Saturn uh, and with the wild goat or ox. And again, of the uh, Christed nine cows. So I looked up that energy to see what might come up as a message and an article about the 14 cows pledged to the American people to bring them peace after 9-11 came up and that was from CNN.com. It was 9-11, 2021, the anniversary of 9-11 and on June 3rd, 2002, William um, Bransick had traveled to the Anusian to formally accept this gift of cows to bring us peace after 9-11. And there were a thousand people waiting for them when they arrived, but they couldn't get the cows to America because of all the red tape and going, you know, bringing animals to another country and that it would cost so much more than the cows were worth to bring them to the United States. So due to the laws and the costs, etc., four years later, on the fifth anniversary, 9-11-2006, the U.S. Ambassador, Michael Rannenberger, went to their country to cement a deal for their tribe to take care of America's 
heard in perpetuity. Or to say thank you, announced an establishment of a scholarship for 14 boys and girls in the village to go to local schools, and that's going on to this day. So this was about a boy who made his way out of, of destitution, basically, in his village. And now the her their herd that they've left there for them to care for grows, as now they have 35, or at the time of this article they did. And they each have, a, they each have special twin tower markings on their ears, so you know, you know that which are part of the American herd. Camelli decided that he could do more good for the world as a diplomat than a doctor. So then, so he hopes to become a Rotary International World Peace Fellow at Duke University. So he had gotten a scholarship in the University of Oregon because of all the publicity he was getting about um, what he was doing. So they, the, University of or the University of Oregon gave him a scholarship offer. He received a plane ticket from a Florida businessman, and then other American uh, supported for his clothes and other materials he would need. So that was in 1996. And then he, trans he would transfer to Stanford afterward. The day that 9-11 happened, he was supposed to meet the Kenyan president in New York, 9-11-01. So this group of cows grew from 14 to 35 with twin tower tattoos, TT, to nest on earth as a sign of respect, to sit and stew on the bench, unsure of how long to fry. And again, that number 6880 coming up. And then that the uh, 14, the number four written 14 times with sister on either side, which also means 14th century and the number four or fourth grade. Um, and there was also a message that came up with that. They were all Polish messages. Road workers found stone and pottery reveal ancient settlements in Poland. And they were dating them back to 20, 2300 BC to 1800 BC. And that was the Charlotte Observer, msn.com. And, and then Moses was coming up 14th century BC. So this 14 was so significant about, because the different things I was looking up all came up in the 14th century. The year 1349 to 50 had come up which was, um, it's the name of a band, but it's when Black Death in Scotland and Sweden and hit Norway in, in 1349, as I was pulling cards from the Past Life deck. And Egypt was coming up with the male and female, which came up again today. Lady Liberty without a flame in her hand, but with the spiritual light at her left sh shoulder. Hands something to read, angels watching over, the hunger of man and wife, a baby in order. The spouse and authoritative or authority figure was coming up with the baby, which was that Moses energy that came up today. And again, Moses, 14th century BC, um, 40 years of wandering in the desert and lived to 120. And the magical gavel came up and the hands on the baby in the basket, the bird's nest, regarding the arts and finance, nature and living off the earth, and woodwork, pulling strings to pay for the Native American to be biblical again, being financed to become the shaman and build a fourth leg. So, and again, that Black Death, that was the bubonic plague from 1346 to 53, where 50 million died. Um, creative finance is coming up to live in a teepee and build a whispering bench, and now we have all these little unit homes that are, people are building, and a seat for two, the Bible of the inner child et al. Twelve shocking rays of color and sound and waves of grain, God's reign, for perfect harmony in the twelve chakra systems, Lord Maitreya coming up in Thoth there, and Buddha and Saint Germain with Lady Portia together. And Jesus came up with that pull right there. Buddha, Jesus, St. Germain and Lady Portia, Lord Maitreya, Thoth and the body of an orchestra, 
12 chakras of, uni of unicorns and angels, the lady and the saint and Buddha between, standing up for the page of cups, Jesus in the union with Lord Maitreya and Thoth, the impurity of thought, word and deed, with each aspect in tune for perfect harmony in the 12 chakras. The, uh, the angel and the phoenix kept coming up together multiple times too, where they're both rising from the ashes together. And then the Ark of the Covenant was coming up as alignment, a line of attention. And line, of course, can be your lineage. It can be an arc. It can be a bridge. It can be a leap. A leap of faith in I heart squared was coming up. And then the heart squared becomes the open book, the living library. Um, the Al Albion Swords also was coming up. And when I looked up Albion, Albion Sword, I was looking at Albion just to see what was coming up. And Albion Swords Limited came up, and there was a remembrance of Howard Livingston Keith Waddell, who had died on 4-14-2022. So there's that 14 and 4-14. Um, he was co-founders with his wife, Amy. And this is quoted from the site, the, one of the greatest sword manufacturers in the world. And this had come up right after I'd been at my brother's house, and I hadn't been upstairs in their house in a long time, and I'd noticed that he had three swords on his wall in his bedroom. And now the sword site was coming up. Um, the man wh whose company this was, he was the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Department of Labor in Washington under the Clinton administration, handling external relations for secretary and secret uh, a couple of secretaries and had received awards for his work there he had received the coveted hammer award and this was right after that past life deck card came up with the sparkly gavel which is the hammer coming down and again the carpenter building the fourth leg of the bench he had received the coveted hammer award from vice president gore then what came up was so special for me. Coming to the 25th, April 25th, was a Thursday, and I had, I had woken up already. I was still lying in bed, and I heard this really loud noise. And it, my first instinct was like several people like storming across my yard or something. I'm like, what the heck was that? And if it wasn't that, it sounded like Santa Claus landing on the roof. I'm like, what the heck was that? So I look out the front window and I didn't see anything. So I kind of blew it off because whatever it was, maybe there's an animal that ran across the roof or something like that. So I didn't think anything of it. I got up and I got dressed and I went out to get Teddy to take him out so he could go to the bathroom. And I'm watering the plants out back as I normally do, not thinking anything of it. And as I finished watering one of the plants, I turn around and there's these two huge geese on my roof. And they're still standing there, like they're not scared away when we came out the door, which was really weird, because I'd been watering the plants. There was one bigger than the other, but they were both huge. And the, the bigger one, I assume the male, was calling. I don't know if they were calling to the group or just making some kind of call. I don't know what it was. But boy, they were beautiful, but I didn't get an opportunity to get a shot of them before they took off. I was talking to him for a little bit before they left, but he was busy, he was busy doing business <laughs> when I was talking to him. Um, and they were both positioned north. And I, all I can tell you is the, the profundity of their presence, it being in their presence. I don't know if you've ever been around a, a huge goose, but the, you know these were Canadian geese. They were huge, and it was so exciting to see them on my roof because I've been here for 35 years. I've never seen um, geese on my roof. Like, I've seen the flocks fly overhead, but I've never seen one land anywhere near my house. Not that I remember, anyway. Um, and I looked at the clock, and it was 8.50 that morning that that happened. And then two days later, the same thing would happen again. The number 1212 was coming up too. Let's 
see here. Yeah, so on the 27th, on the 27th, I heard, I was in bed again, and I heard geese again. And when I saw these geese this time, it was 8.05. So again, the 8 and 5 came up both times. One was 8.50, the other was 8.05 in the morning. And I didn't see, I, I heard them, and I heard that they weren't moving. And I kept hearing them, so I knew they were somewhere, but I didn't see them out the window. So I ran to the kitchen to see if I could see them out back, and then I ran outside, and there were two more geese on my roof, but they were much smaller geese. They looked like babies compared to the uh, ones that had been here the two days prior to that. And then they were just kind of hanging out, and I did get a little video that I posted on Instagram of those two geese. But it was really cool. And they were standing right, right over my bedroom, literally. So it was pretty cool. So let's see here. So I did this um, message of the day, and this was on the 25th. So we have the Journey of Love, the Shaman Dreams deck, the Nature's Whispers, and then the Metatron deck down here. The underlying energies, three cards each, unless other cards want to come out. And these all come out organically, and I use these in, in numerology and to finish off the story for each. So the numbers that came up with the piles for this read were 1, 2, 1, 1, and then 1, 2, 1, 2. So there's that 12, 12, which it has been coming up a lot. This all, this whole past week. Awareness came up with that as well as Beverly and the power of God, Scarecrow, and God is with me. The divine mass and divine feminine align as the hanging man and the hanging man, as the hanging man with justice. The divine masculine world and the divine feminine. The underlying energy of the number two in within nothing there is everything. Number 60 is Watchers, 23, You Are Worth It, and 15 of Clarity, the High Priestess Divine Feminine Womb of Mother Earth, and the Peace of the Tyon Totem. Tyon is Tiger-Lioness connection, the totem here, watching from the desert. The King of Wands sees her, and the Seven Candles, in a flowering of the horizon at 444, or the Angelic Realms, with their ship coming in to a private beach, as she uses diamond light to shower going within for clarity or doing shadow work with Pisces and Capricorn energy here from the plains to the desert to the ocean and within the 24 of the Queen of Wands and the space between the words the 55 of acceptance and number two of within nothing there's everything as the Queen of Wands with the truth or Excalibur for their higher self the fairy tale that emerges from the space between and the silences the 43 of the bride offering herself was the first card out there with the three of cups. The 19 of the sun and the divine feminine higher self comes together with Shakti sun, Pisces or Virgo and Leo, very sensual energy here of the womb and the breast and a jolt from source via the womb, right? Kind of coming in from the womb to shock you, kind of like a lighting a fire under your butt type of energy. The 62 of the choice to be imprisoned by the mind uh, or anxiety free. The 12 of self initiation of she in the vortex. And all five of those cards were feminine vortex energies. It was very, very feminine there. She creates the energy from integrating the chaos and the calm. As we then go to the underlying energy of the 48 and the Sky Dancers and the Eight of Cups, the 14 of the Drifter and Temperance, the 60 of the Watchers and the Six of Swords, surrendering to go within, patience to experience life as it comes, peace and observing within the tie-on connection, the Sky Dancers and Drifters together in peace. As the next first card is the 22 of Fool's Embrace, the 42 of Netcaster, and 15 of the Dust Devil, watching Superfly do a cannonball in a leap to the Two of Cups, where the net is waiting for them as preparations come to fruition, moving the shadow out of stagnation. 
The totems are to witness this all go down, the fool and the devil, as the faith and the shadow travel hand in hand. The five of closing door and the 37, which was the day I was writing this, was 37, and the magician's sword. And so this then Albion swords was coming up again. As the truth sets you free through the king of cups, which is also representat representative of, the, of unconditional love, and the three keys of alchemy, 37, with the hierophant and then unconditional love, three keys of alchemy, in the folding of the blades inside out, the magician's sword or S word, and confidence in their magic. And again, referencing Sophia at 519, which is the hierophant and the sun. The underlying energy of the 46 of gratitude and appreciation and prior to that was 11 of, I don't know what that was. It looks like December, but it's not December. And 43, love matters. Gratitude and appreciation with 38 of acceptance of love, 23 that you are worth it, that's the king of wands, as the six of cups and the little fairy girl and the unicorn in the rainbow. The queen of cups accepts his love as her vines grow around his trunk. The King of Wands and your vision, King of Wands, are worth it. As the 43, Love Matters, where the bird opens up to a plane inside, and again, the geese were coming up there, as the old ship leaves, the 43, 46, and 38, the three cards that came up in a row were literally me and my two kids' soul numbers all together, 43, 46, and 38. And then the 23 of the King of Wands, the mystery man, where then the first card coming up was the 22 of the Leap of Faith, the 14 of Assurance, and the 45 of Empowerment, the 41 of being in service. And then it was reminding me um, the, of the flying trapeze here. Love you, honey. I'll see you later. Have a good time. So it's reminding me of the episode of Carrie in Sex and the City when she did the flying trapeze, because that came up. As he watches patient, patiently as seasons come and go, and in the grief she rises, empowered, loving herself in service of the little ones, the mermaid and the seahorse, the maiden of the sea, and Pegasus was coming up here too. So a lot of times they'll come up as um, Andromeda and Pegasus, which uh, share a star in the sky. And then the underlying energy of the 16 of gold and the gold cup, the 34 of ancestors, 40 of evolution, and 15 of clarity, and sudden infinite love coming in, and the energetic exchange from ancestors and appreciation, birthing the new with the page of cups, that innocent love with clarity and shadow work, after the three of creation, and the underlying energy of letting go, expanding and contracting, and then the 55, red shaman of truth with the peace pipes and then the uh, the the pied piper and the sand piper also came up the mother father and shaman bring truth in gifts for love of the ancestors to stream in through the birth of the new page of cups the evolution here to go within and clear with diamond light and then the next first card was the ten of the new dawn destined and the welcome back as she basks in his light the 14 of boundaries and patience with keys, auric keys. And again, Alicia keys had come up earlier. Watch where you step through arches and steeples until you make it to the other side. The diamond rays, the sun rays from dawn to dusk, the life bulb, the womb rays with the page of wands coming up here and the scalloped Magdalene, the key sun, pink and gold and diamond purification with the 12 of Akashic Records for Wisdom, to visit a page with the Page of Wands, to visit with family for self-satisfaction. So I opened, I opened a gift from the stars by Elena Danan to page 330 that day. And it was at 548, which is the Hierophant and the Eight of Cups, walking away and within. And the page 330 was a picture of Elena with Thor Han looking at the holographic map in the ship. 
and then talking about the fact that this map was just a taste of all of the family that we actually have out there. The joy of the two fools who leap and fly into their destinies, a new dawn, and the sun with the sun and Shakti's shock rays or chakras, one to one with the two of cups, with patience and two angels from dark to light, trapped in the shadows of sadness to retreat to the womb and start again as the page of wands. The hanging man wise with their truth to set them free in exchange for love, the holy grail, from another hanging man learning from different pages to great family with each passing day, learning what makes them happy at 601. So um, you might want to check out Diary of a CEO. The episode with Gary Brecka was really good about um, DNA biomarkers and such and health ish health. He was really, really interesting to listen to. And it was interesting, too, because he talked about hydrogen and water, and I just started drinking hydrogen and water. Um, the card phobias. I'm going to pull a card now from the past life deck because I've been using it a lot this past few weeks. And the card phobias has also been coming up a lot. So fears of anything, really. A serious call, and again referencing to serious, a call for the new ship to come in. Once mother stations, the dragon rises to the sun, triggering to the lion's roar, triggering the lion's roar in a tower event. And again, eight 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 is referenced there, since this year Lion's Gate is a triple eight, triple threat, <laughs> coming from Valentine's Day last year, seven seven seven, one year, one month, one day, one hour, to eight 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 this year, at eleven eleven. And it, I was getting not a Pleiadian, but a serious ship coming in. As the owl is spirituality and religion and the king of wands owl that spreads his wings between Sirius and Alhina, escorted by Betelgeuse and Procyon. And then I was guided to open the Bible at, at 722 here, and it was page 138, which was St. Luke and number 16, Rich Man and Lazarus and a Lesson on Faith. With birth and persecution and inquisition here, the emperor and thorns and sisters seeing the sun through the trees. The medicine man and or woman and the two of the angel of higher realms. The shaman collects feathers to wire and the angel with owl, an owl who doesn't want to lose their wings. So again, the shaman who collects feathers to wire them together and then the angel who's an owl who doesn't want to lose their wings. So again, the fear of the shaman collecting feathers when maybe they just found those feathers. They never harmed anything. So let's see what comes up from the past life deck here. The angels for you. Interesting, because angels had come up earlier today and I was thinking about this angel card when they said that. And the bottom of the deck here is the monk or nun. All right, so this an energy of, 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 of being pure in order to be an angel. And what's under there is there's that sparkly gavel that I was talking about, right? The hammer coming down and authority figures, but there's sparkles around this, like there's magic happening regarding whatever this is building, you know, whether it's a court case or building a house. And the contrast between these two energies, right, of the monk and the judge in court. And behind that is the love life, right, bringing those two polarities together with the angels. And there's that phobias card, right? So, and there's this energy because the, the arts something that was called the arts was the art of healing and there's there's key codes and strings attached to those things with the arts right and so now we're talking about medicine as being an art and then the fear of that that holds right being strung up by strings and keys keep you in jail right so there's a lot of uh, wounds associated with these things okay so that's what was coming up with the past life deck here 
as the underlying energies of the lovers here with imbalance, inequity, in pursuit of facing their fears or unfair competition with the King of Swords reversed, energizing their destiny, exposing disciplined release of secret passion, playing hardball, and the Knight of Swords reversed with the Ten of Wands reversed, perhaps humiliated at work. Maybe it's not working out with the Queen of Pentacles upright, defenseless to the Empress reversed, holding on, keeping what she has left away from failure of the Ten of Pentacles reversed, family, business, or community, and their dysfunction or loss, and receiving an opportunity to ground and integrate jealousy with the Knight of Cups reversed and justice reversed or injustice, something that's unfair to the Page of Pentacles reversed, broken, needing help, or coddling as the King of Wands reversed maybe torturing in divide in need of peace though with the magician upright and the wounded warrior pissed off at them tempted by another offer from the page of swords a message from the king of pentacles in a bold move to awaken or shine under the spotlight to get help the patient angel left behind receiving big love from the emperor here perhaps dead tired of investing in the queen of cups reversed which could be a very manipulative energy or maybe someone who's depressed or dealing with addictions as the Page of Wands is upright, inspired by the Nine of Pentacles, Sovereign Catch, but doesn't, but doesn't want them to feel sorry for them. The Nine of Pentacles star enjoying props at present, coming together, a gift. The Two of Swords reversed, being clarity for the Knight of Wands rushing in with the fool upright, the queen of swords, committed to walking away from judgment, sweating it out, dumping emotional attachments, and suddenly running away from their lover. As the lovers upright, an energetic exchange to make them happy for a peaceful ending, or excuse me, for a painful ending, performing and offering tickets at night to end the nightmare and be happy again, not sleeping or rising above at home with the king of cups upright, the Page of Cups and the Queen of Wands and Sweet Innocence of Coming Full Circle to the Page of Cups one-to-one. -one. Okay, so then those other two geese showed up. Again, the Medicine Man and Woman were coming up with as dream catchers, having trust and faith coming up very strongly over and over again here. And then the energy of the caduceus was coming up and the snake. So literally the angel and the snake came together. And I want to show you these two cards because the way they came up was literally making the caduceus. So the angel and the snake, let's see if I can find those real quick here. Here they are. So you can see how this makes up the caduceus here, the angel and the snake. Okay, and that came up more than once here. As then, of course, medicine comes up here in the rod of Asclepius, Asclepius, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, um, the god of medicine, the son of Apollo. And again, the, the caduceus used to be just a branch and a snake, one snake wrapped around it. And the messages I was getting around that was they just couldn't see the feminine side yet, which is why it wasn't balanced yet, right? There wasn't a masculine and feminine side because you couldn't see the etheric feminine side. The energy of um, Asclepius was then, because he was saving too many people, Zeus got pissed off and he was killed by him for healing too many people. Um, then Hermes, or Mercury, was known for carrying a staff called the Caduceus, which was the two snakes and the wings, or the herald's wand. And the snake, of course, was used because of its ability to regenerate and shed its skin and venoms that kill parasites. So then Hippocrates of Kos was 1450 to 380 BCE, believed to be the direct descendant of him. And in the... Um, in the pledge, you know, when you become a doctor, you swear by Apollo, the physician, and by 
Asclepius. I want to say Asclepius because it's A-E, Asclepius. So I broke down his name to see what messages wanted to come through. And the whispering bench was coming through with the masculine human connected to the divine lead in sky and heaven. The bridge after death, you see us, you are now in heaven. The leaper arc after death, the holy grail and the holy communion or multiple EUs, which is wood, singing, uh, the anvil and incus bone also comes up, that which is the middle ear, to be front to have the facade of the house. So again, comes up as from null and void with the origin that disappears, back to where you once belong. The Ark of the Covenant was coming up as the Caduceus, the CA, as the Covenant of the Ark that guides us. The Divine Holy Grail, because the U is the Holy Grail, and then the C is the Holy Communion. The Holy Grail is the whole God's Rail, right? The, the tunneling through of the portal. And then the, the, the C of the Communion is actually the Holy Calm Union. And then God's Ray L was coming up and literally looks like God Israel, the covenant of the ark union and the LM, which is lumen or luminous flux to leave name or good reputation behind was all coming up with that. The erod of, of a sepulip, a, ugh, I can't say it. So, Caduce, so Caduceus and the covenant ark of divine holy G rail, God's rail, and communion, the portal of God's ray L or Israel, the promise to arc into union and away from name or reputation, right, that you used to have, leaving your old life behind, of two vine portal or two eyed needle, God's L ray or path of Christ's alm, the soul, the Christed gift, lumens, the elm tree, the alpine pasture, or the temple of luminosity. Then the different trees in the Bible were coming up. Acacia was coming up as significant. And on, under the acacia, or shita, is the wood used to build, so they think, the Ark of the Covenant. So again, the Ark of the Covenant coming up again. And the cypress used uh, to build houses and ships, believed to be the tree they used for Noah's Ark. So back to the angel and the snake that had come out then, the part of the caduceus you can't see, and then Jeb came up because Jeb, who is supposed to be, is a parallel to Cronus or Saturn, um, is represented by the goose, which kept landing on my roof, the father of snakes, and grand, you know his grandfather is Amun-Ra and he's considered God of the earth. And then Juno came up. And Juno was retrograde uh, January to April 21st. It was still in Virgo, but it went retrograde, but now it's direct again. So some of the aspects were coming up around Juno. And uh, what else was coming up here? I'm trying to remember, Juno considered was it the geese sacred? I know I wrote it down here. I was just looking at some aspecting there. Oh, two health wise. I feel like um, when my brother was here and he got sick with the C word, um, I was busy taking care of him. And I told you that my daughter and I just had really bad headaches one night. Uh, but otherwise, I didn't get sick. Um, I feel like there's been a lot of like post nasal drip, but I'm 
not have I'm not sneezing or having any allergy symptoms or anything like that. Just that collection keeps collecting like my body's still fighting something off. Um, but that just started when that happened. So besides that, I've been fine. But um, I had said that I felt like it was working out my back injury, right? Going back to the initial wound. Because at the time that happened, that the virus came into the house, I was getting pain in my right hip, which then was leading into my right SI joint, which is what I fell on, and then also led into my right waist, which got jammed when I fell. And it was interesting because as the past two weeks went on, everything kind of moved through there and then went into my left side. And then I literally, the other day, I just literally felt like my whole rib cage was jammed, like when I had fallen. And that worked its way out. So it's really interesting how everything's kind of winding through to clear all that energy out. So don't worry, like if you have old injuries that are popping up, it's because we're revisiting the entry wound to clear it. So yeah, the 28th is when um, I was feeling like my, my rib cage was jammed the same way I felt when I fell. Let's see here. So then um, there was a website I, I bring up every now and then. I couldn't find it the last time it came up. And I, I opened my iPad and it was right down at the bottom in, you know, in a little closed folder. Um, and I just opened it up and there it was. But I hadn't found it the day I was looking for it, so I don't know where it came from. But it's called the Revelation 12 Dragon Constellation, the Signs of Heaven. And the site that I was referencing was the heavensdeclare.net. So it has to do with a Bible story of constellation that's a little bit different than what our actual constellations show. And I don't, their story isn't what I'm getting specifically, because I always get the energy of the dragon facing Orion is Orion facing his inner self, right? His shadow energy here. But it was really, but you can check that website out if you'd like to. The Revelation 12 dragon constellation and the signs of heaven. And uh, something they quoted again was something from Revelation 12.12. 12. So there's that 12.12 12 again. And that was kind of working again through my injuries. I, injuries, I was drawing it out to see how it was playing out balance-wise. It was very interesting. So you might want to do that. Like if you have injuries that are coming up, draw them to see where they're moving to or where they're moving away from. Or are they going in circles? Are they spiraling to unravel something? Uh, Puget Sound also came up here. And also with jam and mucus was coming up. The mucus plug in pregnancy was also coming up along with lethargy, idleness, and sweat, right? Sweating it out. So there's, there's this energy of wounding regarding mucus and jams regarding pregnancy. And again, the jam of the Holy Grail and the Holy Communion. And then I was going back to the eclipse on the 8th to the ninth, which the ninth was that seven three nine thousandth day, so four eight was the seven three eight nine nine ninth day, so it went from the chariot and thirty eight to the chariot and thirty nine of the queen of cups and the knight of cups, from nine 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 to zero zero zero. Um, yeah. And I also started running a bit the past uh, week or so too, which has really been helping to unravel those pains. For me, that works because that jogging is something that makes me feel good. So that might not be what you do for yourself, but you need to find, you know, and, and follow your own inner guidance. Okay, let's see here.
All right, so now we have the read on the table here. And I'm going to let me take the bowl off of there for you. And actually, I want to roll the die for you, too, before we do this read. For the Twin Flames. Okay, we have the nine coming up, which is the Hermit and Virgo energy, but it's also endings, compassion, uh, completion points. We have Leo coming up here, too. And the inner child is coming up a lot today. And then we have Mercury over here. And we should, we're in, I believe we're direct at this point with the Mercury retrograde. I think we're definitely out of that. So we have, and Mercury is Gemini and Virgo. So there's a lot of mutable energy there along with Virgo over here too. And then Leo between. And I keep, I'm seeing like a, uh, an alien in this Mercury for whatever reason that's reminding me of an alien instead of Mercury. There's energy of the hermit and then the extraterrestrial over here. Interesting, right? The hermit, the inner child, and the extraterrestrial that you are. So this read uh, was done on the 28th. I cut the Syrian star seed deck at 725, which is the chariot and the knight of wands. And then I finished the clarifications at 735. We had the major arcana of the shadow or the devil, ascension, which is the world, karma, which is the judgment card here, and then justice, which came up here at the end divine justice and before the read reflection and strength we're under here which is the hermit and the strength card and then over here at the end we have the lovers and the emperor which is the reason card there were two swords three cups one pentacle and one wand we had the king of swords queen of cups king of wands and then before the read the page of pentacles came up and the queen of swords after the read she's right here at the end as far as the numbers, we had double threes and double fives. Those were the most significant. 33 is the Christ vibration. 55 is the Ace of Swords, Excalibur. We had 23 of the King of Wands, 35 of the uh, Nine of Wands, the Wounded Warrior. The 56 of the Two of Swords, 68 of the Page of Pentacles, and then 810, which is zero, or source energy backing up the 81, which is the end of the cycle, basically. The nine by nine. Um, the code line was all about 53 or just three. To see the bridge, if support key, master of the queen of the night, infinitely referencing divine justice here. Also a sea gateway coming up here. Um, the, the Euro India gateway was coming up. Um, and yes, support key, the master king of clearing, five o'clock shadow coming up and taking the high road with emotional attachments or even Adam, divine justice with truth and balance to see the temple of I God and Christmas or Christ consciousness mass, the key master of shadow wisdom and shadow work as the knight of, sh the knight of swords came up here as a judge or Libra energy, but the, the uh, judge's lineage could be coming up as well the tribe of judges, the divine judges. The Ten of Swords reversed was the first card here in the underlying energy. And below that's the Hermit reversed, Strength upright, the Page of Pentacles upright, and the Eight of Cups upright, and the Six of Cups reversed. Losing one's mind and taming the beast as the Page of Pentacles walks away from different kids, a falling out or negative childhood here. And now that the worst is over, or the bliss of bad girls, the Ace of Pentacles is upright. Perhaps a big offering. This is time, money, and energy, or a new life. Offered for detox, or to break the chains with the devil, to bridge to a happy family, or emotional fulfillment, with the Knight of Wands upright, in a 5D connection, with the Divine Feminine, wholly surrendered. With Virgo reversed and Leo 
upright, Capricorn reversed, and Saggy and Pisces upright, or the Knight of Wands upright rushing in after sleeping with Pisces, neighbor, or the Divine Feminine who's fully surrendered. The energy of the Page of Pentacles, walking away from a falling out with the Queen of Pentacles reversed, and that could be a mother and child. Um, the Queen of Pentacles reversed may be overworked and being strong, or mal-aligned and being strong, or trying to tame the beast. There could be, they could be dealing with Leo or a pet, perhaps mother cleaning up the messes or tired of it. The recent past is the Queen of Cups upright in bliss after the King of Wands uh, resisting drama or sudden changes. Dreamy or with options or heaven in their eyes, the Hermit's reverse coming out to stand up or scared to speak in front of class or defending their lack of sleep or difficulty in seeing another's perspective. As the Queen of Swords reversed, may have been up all night or really early or deception at a distance or in disconnect or doesn't agree with or made another feel bad about it. The foundation is the King of Swords diving or divvying up an inheritance or dividing information equally in energetic exchange for truth and balance, equitable distribution in a split with the Ten of Pentacles reversed family, business or community with dysfunction or loss with Virgo reversed and Leo upright or a pet, and the Queen of Cups with the King of Swords both upright, but feeling badly for hiding, coming clean or cleaning up with the Knight of Cups and the Knight of Pentacles both upright here, offering help to patient angel who doesn't have any tools or is broke, or offering to pay for tools that they broke, or the Knight of Cups with the Knight of Pentacles have to face an unhappy crowd, with Sagittarius upright, Gemini or Virgo reversed, Cancer reversed, Taurus reversed, or patient angel manipulated out of their car, or coming clean about an accident, or destruction of property, and the Empress reversed, not pleased, having to work so hard for the Nine of Pentacles reversed, and the Queen of Wands reversed, who may have no options here, or are dependent children still living at home. Or these are two boys coming in to ask two girls out, or apologize about something at 833, which is the eight of strength and the 33 of the seven of wands standing up for themselves. The challenge being the shadow reversed, the detoxing, not doing the work, embarrassed and keeping to self or pretending not to know or be aware or falling out between two families here with the 10 of pentacles reversed who made rep restitution with the Ten of Cups upright in court, perhaps, right? So the Ten of Pentacles is reversed, but the Ten of Cups is upright. And now, or at the current time, is the Ascension world, whole, complete, a completion point. After the Page of Pentacles left, the Four of Pentacles, or Divine Masculine holding the bag, and exposed to the Queen of Cups upright and the Page of Cups reversed, which could be just two water signs, or a mother and child, or two, two siblings, but the queen is upright, the page is reversed. That could also be a message of hers. She may feel rejected. But looking back at an investment or plan to divorce or break a contract or trap or take hostage under the radar, a secret passion or lack of integrity with lover or affections, now the worst is over and moving out without a word. The divine masculine could be saving at night or taking walks instead of going out. And during the day, with the Queen of Cups upright and the Page of Cups reversed, looking back at the Divine Feminine coming out spiritually with their hands tied and no success, or under the radar with a secret passion and lover's bliss, visiting with the Page of Swords reversed, or destabilized by a negative message, or rumors that have been spread, by gossips or bad influencers. And soon here is the Page of Pentacles upright, the Hermit left behind in the Mary Magdalene cave, perhaps heartbroken by the Emperor Upright, an ambulance chaser was coming up for somebody, or the Emperor holding their tongue with the King of Pentacles Upright and a falling out, or these are father and son, or forgot to pick them up. And this could be someone at a hospital appointment, right? Getting in, uh, some kind of test where they have to be picked up and someone might have forgotten to come get them. Um, we have the Empress reversed and the Emperor Upright with the Queen of Wands reversed and the King of Wands Upright the Queen of Swords reversed with the King of Swords upright, or the Queen of Pentacles reversed with the King of Pentacles upright. So they're all the same positions as far as masculine and feminines. Only the Queen of Cups and King of Cups are both happy here, as the Twin Flames see themselves as karma here, 
the bliss of the king of swords upright with a final judgment and the king of wands the shaman over here or the king of wands sent a passionate loving offer to make peace or offered to travel with the group or for a competition to the king of swords with clingy page of wands reversed or the page of wands may be exhausted maybe they're tired of being put between the king of swords and the king of cups post war or virus or tired of being treated like a child by aquarius king of swords and scorpio king of cups around the twins are how they're seen as the king of wands the star the healer the dreamer with a twist of fate at work or things have slowed down or there's a leo between aquarius and libra and the king of cups or both the king of wands and the king of cups are, have invited the king of swords but he didn't come the block here's the three of cups reversed perhaps bad influences or antisocial behavior and a wake-up call to break patterns or break with certain people dropping the facade or the king of pentacles calling them out on their missteps with justice upright grounding and integrating the page of pentacles student offer opportunity or invite or the page of pentacles and the page of swords reversed may not be coming together here or libra upright and gemini upright with the emperor or aries dropping the facade at work with the queen of swords reversed all three air signs could be here at the end of this read here um, or the king of swords and the queen of swords reversed may be acting like kids or their kids spreading rumors or not getting along as the emperor upright is refusing to surrender to all that is with some issues at work with the queen of swords reversed and we have virgo capricorn reversed and then leo aquarius pisces libra and gemini and aries all upright here um, earth signs were not great energy here the six of cups is reversed perhaps some disgruntled kids with the bliss of the king of swords upright making a decision or about the king of wands upright and the queen of cups upright disappointment or sadness challenged by detox or breaking chains with the hermit left to watch over the group of the three of cups reverse difficult kids or drunken friends and not coming together being antisocial and ascending to justice or with pisces and libra not socializing with the emperor who dropped the ball with issues at work with the queen of swords reversed or falling out between the queen of pentacles reversed and the queen of swords reversed um, kids the page of pentacles upright and the page of swords reversed perhaps capricorn reversed is spreading rumors or being antisocial or friends that are bad influences or has friends that are bad influences here or earth signs being excluded here by the queen of cups pisces and the king of swords libra or aquarius or the king of wands refusing to come together with libra king of pentacles as they are giving affection to the emperor dropping the facade about work issues with the queen of swords reversed perhaps the queen of swords has spoken on behalf of the emperor upright without his permission so now he could be really upset about that but he's not showing it he's upright okay so then um on the 29th asms were coming up like isms but asms and it was cut asm asm came up as the upside down e lowercase e z m as firm intention or bone uh, assembly language assignment air to surface missile anti-ship missile assistant stage manager also came up there and a to z isms right so isms for a to z uh, and then the number 413 was coming up so i was looking through the all the bible 413 verses and also for 413 comes up with 314 pi plus the the 1.618 referencing you know to the golden mean and the three of those numbers add up to 8.888 which i brought up before but for whatever reason 413 is coming up again here and april 13th came up maybe if you hear this you're being guided to look back at your notes from the 13th um philippine uh 
Philippians 4.4.13 came up as, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And then letters to Atticus came up. And that was from November 1555 BC. And the, that day that came up, 413, was a note about arriving in Tusculum, 14th of November. I found Dionysius there. I wished to be at Rome on the 17th. And something about Milo's wedding and wanting to be caught, in, caught up on all the politics before they get to Rome. So 4.13 was coming up as the emperor's transition or death or change. The lambda or lambda father leap to be to make magic with the empress. And then 3.14 was coming up as the empress's patience and balance, the angel. The empress soars to make magic with the emperor. The emperor being the dark knight and the empress being the angel. And together being 7.27, the chariot's new passion, the queen's gambit. Then Luxar was coming up on the 29th as well. And I've been getting a lot about Egypt energies to connect with those energies. And then... Um, Again, Ashulapius came up again when I was reviewing all this energy. So again, the ash to rise, purified and holy and blessed. To sing. And again, the cup or strainer for the ashes, the ash awaken to heal, cure, purify, and bless. Or Jesus is literally ashes to rise. Ashes in the horn or cornucopia to bundle and sing to bless. And Asilius also was coming up as the tallest oak with edible acorns, sacred to Jupiter, Zeus's grandchild. I am, so again, the feminine keeps coming up as something different than I am. Like I am comes up with H, because H is I fallen over on its side. M, E, M, instead of A, M, and them. So I am, H, M, and them. To clear throat, fold in upon oneself, to clear doubt. That you are vapor, which vapor also means Eden. Unseen and boundary, well seen. The mask, mask your arc or line, your masculine. Mask you line. Mask your arc. And feminine is coming up as the FM I equals nine. The feminine masculine and I am presence. Co creative frequency and digamma waves. Dueling banjos, restrooms, water closets, banjo harmonization and deliverance. But can you receive it? Working too hard, the queen of the night. The yard, the train yard, the shipyard, yardsticks and rulers. Ptolemy and Cleopatra and the numbers 4, 14, 40, and 49, and the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark and the Father's Covenant or Agreement, the Alignment, Intention, an Ark or Leap, bringing, Bridging of Intent, Leap of Faith, I Heart Squared, the Living Library, and multiples of 12 by 12, which equal 144, and a thousand sons, or three holy ones. To infinity and beyond, what's the buzz, light year? As the 698 pod is paid on delivery, the double diamond star, and the Belen, or Bethlehem. Being alone, orphaned, the fear of pyramid pairs, human pairs, and judges gavel, carpenters hammers, someone who had to decide against you so that you would decide for yourself. The Christed horsepower of the whispering bench. It's me, Ed, Med, I, Cine, Mr. Ed, on TV. Your telepathic vision, any channel you like, as many perspectives as possible all my children, and all colors of the rainbow.
as Santa was on my roof as the geese had landed. Geese and 12 M years old. I don't know why I wrote that. Oh, 12 years old, right? Puberty was coming up as well, right? Going from puberty to liberty. The warrior spirit sacred to Juno, the goddess of marriage and eternal youth. Protection and bravery, feather pen, inspired by divine magic, muse and vision. Again, this is the geese. Faithful and loyal, determination, purposeful movement, and able pilot on your journey. Swooping in to grant you a wish, treasure, golden eggs, to help refocus, to give you soul food, your tribe, your mate for life. Safety and stability for your ch you and your children, the sick and the broken, to wrap you in their feathers. Speaking as loudly as necessary to lead in the right direction and follow through to the end. And again, the goose head is Jeb, the father to Osiris. The goose head of renewal here. So today, I was pulling my cards from Crystal Angels, and Teddy was helping me do that today. And I literally said to him, Teddy, this message is from you today. He was so cute about it. And the, you have to read the message from Instagram. And being from Teddy, it was so cool, because it was bringing Moses and Medusa together along with Pegasus. And it was very interesting when it, I ended up with the message, because my daughter has Medusa, and Teddy always reminds us of a, of a horse. <laughs> so he's coming up as Pegasus, and her Medusa, and then the Moses partner. Very interesting the way it was coming up, but check that out. So from the past life deck that I pulled today, Teddy was being very loving and wanting to give me kisses when I was pulling these cards. And again, the angels watching after artistic phobias of the masculine and feminine being strung up, the medicine male or woman, and the sisters with vows, and the monk or the nun, spouses of imprisonment and slavery and persecution and inquisition strung up in Atlantis, fallen pillars. She tried to get to the dolphins in the polluted waters, but couldn't. And now the angels are watching over strings attached and keys to get in and out, associated with instruments of prison and being hung, the, ha the high priestess in jail or tied and stoned, and dolphins in polluted water with no escape, angels waiting for you to call on them. As the high priestess or priest came up looking up, now that their hands are free, with scroll work by candlelight and feathered pen, the Holy Grail or God's Rail. And again, that energy of Ezrael was coming up. The Ray of El, having crossed the bridge with a coded message, a safe to open, God's transportation, a baby in a basket, Levi Moses rescued by the Pharaoh's daughter and used her mother as a wet nurse, where Moses defended a Hebrew and then had to flee to Midian and help the priest's daughter get water for their for their sheep as the shepherds were blocking them from it. And then, of course, her father told her to bring Moses back, and then she ends up marrying him. And that was Zipporah. The deliverance of the baby to Egypt for lessons and blessings. The farmer's daughter, orphaned, missing horses. As Moses and the orphan girl in a karmic relationship of Greco-Roman times. And then the mother of Asclepius came up. because there's a couple of different stories about their mother. So Apollo supposedly married Coronis, who either had, who either was disloyal to Apollo, and so then she was killed, or she had him out of wedlock and then abandoned him because she felt the guilt of, of having the child out of wedlock. And the centaur, Chiron had, taught, had taught him the art of healing when he was growing up without his mother. 
His sanctuary at Epidaurus became an important center of healing in ancient Greek and Roman times and the site of athletic, dramatic, and musical games held in his honor every four years. The motherless boy of Apollo here, brought up by their father, teaching them plant and herb medicine and tutored by Chiron here, spelled C-H-E-I-R-O-N, the centaur, who lived in Mount Pelion. He ended up having, to, before he was killed, two sons and four daughters who were called the, the Ashlepiads, and the most famous was Hippocrates. He was actually given some of the blood of Medusa, so there's a connection between him and Medusa as well. Her blood gave him the ability um, to, to kill and heal. Um, he, this blood was given to him by Athena. And again, it was the blood of the snakes and regeneration. So there's this reference of Medusa in the snake, in the, sim, in the symbolism of medicine. So Zeus killed him with his thunderbolt, and some believe he was placed in the sky as Ophiuchus. Epidaurus, that was founded 6 C BCE and known as Asclepia, Eon. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, believed to be born near there at Mount um, Titlion. Titlion? So there was a large temple, 380 to 375 BCE, and a statue of him in that. That was a huge statue. And then the Thym Thymiel, or Thymali, 360 to 330 BCE, was a round marble building with a mysterious underground labyrinth, perhaps with snakes. And again, that regeneration that's associated with him. And there's also a column Abato, where patients slept for, for them to dream of the cures that they would then be able to administer to themselves. And then the 6,000 seat Greek theater, 340 to 330 BCE, that's still in use today. The sanctuary actually closed in 426 CE when the Roman emperor Theodosius II decreed closure of all pagan sites in Greece. Other sacred sites were located on the island of Kos with important school of physicians from 5 C BCE and at uh, Tegea, I don't know, it's, I think it's T-E-G-E-A. Um, he's, he's always been depicted with a beard and a robe and the staff and the snake, perhaps holding a bowl or a cup, and sometimes a dog at his feet, and associated with three trees, the cypress, pine, and olive. Artworks of Dion, Kos, Athens, and Rhodes from 4 to 3rd century BCE attest to the widespread popularity of him. And so the mother of health was coming up as Medusa with the snakes and the reference to Athena and Pegasus. Very interesting. Apollo also sent the sacred white crow to watch over Coronis, but she fell in love with another, and Apollo ordered Artemis, his twin sister, to slay Coronis. So in that one story where Coronis was his wife. So Medusa, of course, was one of three Gorgons, and she was beautiful. She was mortal. She was like the black sheep of the family until she incurred the wrath of Athena due to either boastfulness or love affair with Poseidon. She, transform, she transformed her into a monster with snakes in her hair, who was then killed by Perseus using her head as a weapon before gifting it back to Athena. She was depicted with bronze hands and gold wings, and Poseidon had impregnat impregnated Medusa prior to that in the temple of Athena, which pissed Athena off. And then Athena and Hermes helped Perseus kill Medusa, but she still birthed uh, Chrysior Chris, and Pegasus, right? The winged boar and then the winged horse. But Perseus had Hades' cap of invisibility and Hermes' winged sandals to protect him, so he was able to get in there and chop her head off. Now Medusa's blood dripped all over Libya, which caused snakes always to be there. And then Seriphos with stones, because this was a place where he used her head on vicious islanders. So there's supposed to be lots of stones there now. So 
So the remaining blood was given to Ashlepius. The left side was to take the, to take people's lives. The right-sided blood was to raise them from the dead. And there was a vial with two drops given to her adopted son, where one was a cure-all and one drop was a poison. Athena also put a lock of her hair in a bronze jar for Heracles, or Hercules, who gave it to Cepheus's daughter. So here again is that effin the energy of one person gifting the other, and then that person giving gifting that to somebody else, not back to them. And there's, what's, there's not a lot of energy on Chrysior. Some say he was just a stout-heeled warrior or a winged boar, he who bears a golden sword, the winged boar, a favorite of Ares, seen as a battle symbol with Ares, the golden blade, or his tusks of gold. And there's some theories that he actually did marry and give birth to an Oceanid daughter of Oceanus and became king of Iberia and bore his son, Geryon, a three-headed warrior killed by Heracles, and Geryon carried a shield with his father's image on it. He also could be the father to Ashidna, half woman and half snake, who lived alone in a cave and became the mate of Typhon. He is credited with bridging the gap between Perseus and Hercules. Some say Demeter's gold curved sword represents the tusks of Chrysior. So back to the dolphins coming up in the past life deck with the high priestess, that the dolphins were, were coming up like dolphins are now angels and angel sonics were coming up there. And those who were hung are now the, the high priests and priestesses who can now use their hands and their abilities. As then I turn to my page with my picture that can now use their hands and abilities of that quantum twin flame energy of push and pull. So let's just pull one last card. Let's see, what do I want to pull? I'm going to just pull from here. So messages of love, oracle cards. And what is the closing message here? At 602 to 603, just turn, which is the lovers and the high priestess and the empress. <sighs> oh, I came right up. So opened up to the twin flame here. And the card is decision. It's time to decide about this relationship. And then this card back here came up also mirrors. This relationship is moving towards sacred union. Well, there you go. The bottom of the deck is don't dismiss the red flags. But again, this is the energy that's going away. Remember to always, you know, not to lose your presence in the moment, not to lose yourself. Okay. So remember to drink plenty of water, get your rest, get your joy, put your feet out there in nature, ground yourself every day so you will feel good every day. And of course, rise and be love. I'll see you guys next time. I am going to try to get the, um, the 12 signs done on my other channel, Evelyn Stainthorpe. If you want to check them out, I haven't begun them yet. I might start them tomorrow. Okay, so I'll see you guys next time. Have a great May. Bye.